Okay, welcome tonight. It's 7 o'clock. We have our Milford Finance Committee meeting Wednesday, June 14th. Um, we do have a quorum. It's good to see the room full. Uh, first thing we'll start with is approval of the May 10th minutes. As revised. As revised. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and seconded. All in favor? Well, wait a minute. Any comments? All in favor? Any opposed? <coughs> I abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. Diana, unanimous with one abstention. Okay. Uh, tonight, we want to talk about the ridership. As a summary item, we know that upcoming meeting, we have a full presentation coming, but we did want you to give us a quick overview. Yeah, so we, um, we were running steady um, up until about March, where we had, um, we had a high of 1,021 riders. Um, then we saw uh, a sharp decline, and we're not sure why. Uh, April was five, 563, and May was 587. Um, so we've asked the MWRTA to join <coughs> us at our next meeting to try to uh, help us understand why the, the sharp decline, if, are we missing something, or um, are those numbers accurate? Um, so hopefully we'll have some more information for next week, or next month. Any questions, comments? Bobby. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one of the revisions that I asked in the uh, minutes of the meeting was to, more as a uh, uh, housekeeping item, was that when this committee, and I will use my word, tentatively approved the funding of the bus route for uh, fiscal 18, um, we asked the chairman to send a letter to the Board of Selectmen indicating that we were sincere in asking that they expand the duties and responsibilities of the Transportation Committee. And there were four or five bullets that we expressly said this is what they need to do because the uh, job description as it pr presently exists does not require them to do analysis or come up with alternatives. And I can't remember off the top of my head exactly what they were, but we have never sent that letter to the selectmen. So I think that's something that we need to do again as a housekeeping item, and it is and in the minutes. You make a note that letter was voted on and should yes, go Yes, it up. was, yeah. Okay. Um, one question came up student ridership because I know Jen Walsh and crew showed up is that remain steady uh, we haven't gotten an update from student ridership okay Mike did you have a question uh, uh, so who's who would be tasked to write at least draft that letter um, Bobby that you that you want I guess would be the question I mean it's easy to put on action someone's going to gonna draft a letter from the Finance Committee who I would assume it would be the chair well, I would think it might be the subcommittee uh, chair. That would that would work too. Who's the subcommittee chair? <coughs> that deals with the ridership. You're our rep you're, he's our representative on the. Um, you're the liaison. liaison. Yeah, he's no so who does that come under? General government, right? I don't know. I'm the chair of general government, but I don't think this comes under general government. But it isn't be. under the selectman's budget. I would just ask the. the I thought it was under Selectman's budget. You want me to write the letter now? To it? Well, what I suggest. You want me to write a letter? I'd yeah. So you got to put the points in that. Just give me the outline of what you want in the letter. Well, that was going to be my suggestion, Mr. Chairman, is that all of us feedback <laughs> if Jerry's going to write the letter as to what we think ought to be in there. I do remember a few speaking points, Mike, yeah. that you brought up. Is it was supposed to be a trial. Right. We asked for the parameters of the trial. We asked for the uh, milestones of success. We asked for what we're looking for in terms of numbers, and at what point do we say, hey, this thing is, is a goal or no goal? Right. And I know those are some of the things. So, and you're you're writing all this. And alternatives, to so look at okay. alternatives. And Bobby, those if I could, could you repeat that now that the scribe is scribing? Rebatum? <laughs> Replay the tape. That's Bullet <laughs> batum. <laughs> Just give me the bullets. And I'll Have the members of the committee um, forward to Jerry what their talking points or, or elements in the letter, or, or what elements ought to be included in the letter. Okay. Within seven days? Five, five bullet points is what you got? Oh, I don't know. It, it depends on everybody else on the committee, Jerry. 
Yeah, but you started. What were yours? We'll start with those. Well, those were Mike's. I was repeating what Mike brought up. It was supposed to be a trial. <clears throat> we asked for what the parameters were going to be in the trial. What were the key points? What were the measures of success? What were the numbers that we determined ought to be? Slow down. You know, I got three already. Measure. Sort of a go, no go. And also, what are the alternatives? I know that Mark Shane brought up the point that with the existing numbers, each ride was pricing out at $60 a ride or something to that effect. So, What are the alternatives if we decide not to go? At, at the know. peak, we were down to 20, 24, but yeah. Yeah. that's the decline. Of, it's right. so what $40 a ride. Yeah, and so 587 riders for the month of May. Right. That's how 50 many, bucks a piece. How many days a week is it? Is uh, we did we have the bus running? It runs only during the week, right? Right. So every 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 month is approximately 20, 21, 22 so days. So that's 29 riders a day. Yes. So if you make the stretch that it's a person going from Shadowbrook to Target, it's really only 13 riders because the person's taking the bus to go there and then it's taking the Another bus to come home. If you assume that they are, yeah, but no matter what, it's a, it's a, so it's two rides. Dollars, it's a lot of money for a person to. Yeah, well, when, when we saw it go from a hundred to sixty to, what at thirty and then twenty four, that was the right trend. Yes. If it's now reversing, we got to watch out. It, it becomes a question about to the point that Bobby is bringing up about the letter. What is the criteria? What are we going to measure, and at what point? And what. Also, Jerry, if you would consider. Will you repeat what you just said? Because that was very good. <laughs> uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't type it fast. Enough. Which point? The part of the last one, what last the criteria one. is that uh, that we're going to make a decision on, right? Yeah. Right. And the uh, ancillary effects, because we know that for our special needs population, yeah. the benefit outweighs effects. the cost. Yeah. So, so to the real point of the last meeting that we had Scott here, right, and the committee. And we're not, we can't direct them what to do, but what are the alternatives? Yeah. But what should we really be looking at? Because the numbers that I looked at, <clears throat> and they were presented to us, is that the bus is virtually empty in the middle of the day for almost 80% of the time. Right. Okay. So either we have a viable... Yeah, the, the peak times are morning, and yeah, then yeah. the afternoon when people return. Those are the peak times. Just, is there a better way? I have one concern is the school situation. Because I, I know I observed five students getting off one morning going to school. Right. And I, is that an alternative that we need to take? We need to figure out if we turn this off, what, what, how are they going to well, get Well, that's there? what I mean by the ancillary effects because the special needs kids, it really, it, it, it's hard to measure it in dollars because there's all these self esteem and yeah. emotion. But we need to know yes. is it still a dozen kids a day or, you know, a dozen a month what what is the number well, and the first year was a no-brainer we got those big grants and it was you know was pretty inexpensive to the town but it won't be that going forward so I yeah, and I think the question at least that I remember was not whether we provide this service but what's the best way because I don't think what's any of us want to yeah what's the most efficient way and none of us want to cut off special needs kids or families absolutely not no, but absolutely the only not. question that I see really legit is, is this the most efficient, the best way to provide a service that we all think is good? And I guess the other question is, I just don't know if we have an answer to it, is, is this bus being properly marketed to the population of the town of Milford? Do, do enough people know about it that would take advantage of it? And, um, yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the finance committee uh, from 1987 is on the website too. So, so, so one thing hey. we did, <laughs> one thing we did ask about uh, or ask from the MWRTA, um, our last meeting, so they should be getting that request now, is that um, we have funds reserved to run a town crier ad. Mm -hmm. We just asked them to design the ad for us. Right. I mean, it's their brand, it's their logo. Sure. They should design the ad. We'll pay to run it. Um, so we're still waiting for their, you know, design for an ad. Okay. Uh, the other thing was we're going to add these, um, uh, they're called uh, transportation spinning tubes, where the schedule will be at the stops and these waterproof mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> tubes. So if you're at a stop, you can see, 
uh, the schedule in there. Um, so we're hoping that that increases some awareness. Okay, the next item on the agenda, there is some confusion. Um, I thought it was clear last year, but Mike, why don't you explain it? Because it was your, you brought it up. Well, some observations from the annual town meeting. And the first one I had to do with our finance report that we give to the town meeting members. Uh, and yes, I think we brought it up last year, but we um, conveniently forgot about it, and then I remembered afterwards. I think that um, the finance committee report, which Mr. Correa, our vice committee vice chairman here, does a wonderful job on. There's a few typos, but that's that's not here. That not the job. No, I don't. And we should be, yeah, we should help um, with the proof. Good reading. answer. But um, I think that um, we go through each of the articles in the budgets. Uh, I think that we need to record the finance committee's votes uh, that we make when we uh, review all of them during the meetings that precede that, especially um, votes that are not unanimous. I mean, unanimous vote, that's the, that's the committee's will. But if we have a vote that is split, and I think we have had a few of them, I think the town meeting members should know that. And I think that that the um, uh, a person from the dissenting vote should have an opportunity to write a dissenting opinion in the finance committee um, report because you give us a nice summary of what we reviewed. But if there's a dissenting opinion that I think the town meeting members should know about, maybe we should put that. I believe we should put that in the report. So, so um, for instance, for the budget where we accept individual budgets are you suggesting that if an individual budget line mm -hmm. um, had a split vote that even though we unanimously voted to approve favorable for the article four mm -hmm. uh, some, uh, but there's a there's an asterisk or exactly. a, a exactly. footnote right. that by the way mm -hmm. X budget was split there's underlying votes that go towards the overall article four and I'm absolutely comfortable you know if you think about it we've got three sections. Yep. The selectmen put together the warrant article, mm -hmm. then we have background, then we have FinCom. Yep. I'm absolutely comfortable with Joycey saying, I didn't agree, I'd like to put a yep. few lines into the FinCom section. Mm -hmm. okay. I think that's great. The only thing is, you gotta do it in a timely fashion. I agree, Because Dr. Abodabo there is always pushing to say, I need it by Friday. So what I'll do is next year or this fall, I'll send out a note because I sent out the preliminary, and I did get typos caught, which was good. Right. Um, but that's different. This but I didn't get anything else, so I'll try and remember. And Mike, just remind me to, hey guys, you got till Friday for any yeah. minority. But it doesn't have to be minority. You know, I've had a couple times when people have come back and said, you really didn't explain that mm -hmm. clear enough. I suggest the following, and we are able to change it. I just think if the goal of this committee is to provide the town meeting members with enough information that they can feel that they get up there and they can vote, even if it's just a voice vote or, or not, that, they, um, that we've given them everything they need. Again, I think everybody last year agreed. Yeah. It just, you know, because like, Joyce, you sent me some stuff, but it was two hours after <laughs> I had sent off the thing to Paul. So I'll try and be a little clearer to say Friday at noon is Paul's deadline. You've got till then. <coughs> you know, and initially when we do the first night and I do out, you know, we've done 20 of the articles. Mm -hmm. If you have comments, don't wait. Give them to me on that 20. Yeah. Right. You may not have them on the next 20. Make sense? Absolutely. Chuck, you know, if we vote unfavorable on an article mm -hmm. and it's a close vote, would you have somebody who voted favorable on it have a chance to state, make a yes, statement? It's the dissenting yes. opinion, Chuck, either way, right? So if the majority votes one way, but there's a real vote that, uh, of the committee that felt it should have gone the other way, that a dissenting opinion should have an opportunity to speak. And not only in the report, but I think that also gives us then the opportunity for a finance committee member from that other side, if he wants to get up and talk at the town right. meeting, and explain that situation, he now has the reason to do it. I think we had a situation a few couple years ago or so where a finance committee member got up and talked, even though the against what the finance committee had voted. 
And that was confusing, I think, to some people. So well, I think and we again, this way. even if you go along and you say, okay, let it go unanimous, if you feel that you'd like some verbiage in there, I think that's cool. Because we're not trying to sway. The, the well, intent of that meeting was not to sway votes our way or against us. It was, as Mike said, to have better informed town meeting members. Well, didn't we do that for for the bus because it was a split vote? Didn't we have that in that report mm -hmm. where we we sh we explained that it was? We used to do that a, a split vote. But I think but to, I to put the vote in, didn't we, Jack? Yeah, it was I took to it agree. on. It wasn't to try an explanation. and right. give a balance, but nobody, you know, Dr. Schiavi didn't come in and say, <laughs> "I want to add these three lines." Dissenting so, opinion, right? Okay. Well, I just don't want to add a, like a pages point. and pages no. of, of dissenting opinion to our report. Uh, do you think a dissenting opinion may sway the town meeting vote? They may be leaning towards, say, favorable, but we come up why we we voted unfavorable, and they say, hey, wait a minute, that's a good idea. I'm going to change my vote. Chucky, information is always good. You know, the old saying, two reasonable people equally informed yeah. seldom disagree. The key is to be equally informed. I have no problem at all giving town meeting members more information. Right. Right. The only thing, hold on one thing. The only thing, the question of counting, mm -hmm. somebody's got to do that because while I'm ticky tacking away, I can't keep track of it was five to four to three. Well, that should be in the, the, the minutes. Well, we don't have time. By the time the minutes come out, right. so we, that we should have real time counting. Somebody <laughs> has to, if you feel it's important enough, have the chairman do it as a matter of um, uh, practice. Uh, after Again. the vote is taken, just verbalize it. Five opposed, ten in and favor. Bobby, that would be fine because I can write that and down. And he can just do that. It'll take ten seconds. And if you miss it, go on to YouTube the, YouTube the next day, and there it is. The next day. Oh, you mean I've got to, Bill for I, TV has I've got to next watch day. Daniel's production <laughs> again? I'm afraid so. <laughs> okay. Take, take out the, the, the watch. Michael. I think one thing that may be a problem is timing-wise, if you, you send out a draft, and if I choose to dissent, and I wait till the last minute to turn my statement over to you, there's no distribution of that to the rest of the people. I'm able to make a statement and get it put in there without any review by anybody. You know, that's legit, because what we may want to do is have Paul tell us what Let's next try for the fall, if you all agree, to set the deadlines of when we have to get it in, and that way you say, okay, 24 hours before Paul's deadline to distribute, all dissenting or additions, typos have to come in. That gives everybody a whole day. You know, and if you really feel strongly, you got 24 hours, you're going to have to make time mm -hmm. to do it. Jeff? I Mr. Chairman, thank you. I, I, I think this is a great idea. The, the town meeting body looks to the finance committee as to vet all the articles. And like everybody said, Article 4, yeah, it, we approved it unanimously, but like you said, the, the, the details of it, no, and that was a 20-second vote for 90-something million dollars. Done. And I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. Just somebody's got to do it. No, I, I so we don't need a vote because we already voted last year to do this. Okay. All right, good. I mean, I envision it this way. I mean, if it's a four, if it's a thirteen to one vote, it's it's not unanimous, but it's pretty much what the committee wants. If it's a split vote, like you know, it's uh, seven to six or something like that, then my view would be that the six members that dissented should together uh, pro uh, provide the dissenting opinion. Agreed. And again, even the 13 to 1. You know, Bobby may feel really passionate mm -hmm. about But being, you'll see that the vote was 13 to 1. Right. And then the but he right. should have the right, even on a 13 to 1, to say, I want these two lines. So, yeah. okay. Next thing. I want to thank Harry, I can never pronounce his name, Charmanian, for coming in. He brought us a copy of the uh, Globe article that highlighted Milford. It was an entire page. Talked very nicely about Milford. Pros and cons. Yes, but the cons were minimal. That's because we have a good police chief. Where was that? <laughs> Boston Globe. Sunday Globe. Recently? Yes. Dates on there. A couple of weeks ago. So I do thank him for bringing How'd it you in. Get your mugshot there. I just work here. 
Um, okay, at this point, unless somebody has an objection, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Dr. Chakey. May I, before we go into the nomination, very, very quickly, um, if, if you've read the Globe and if you've read, uh, found out that the state's uh, bond rating has been uh, lowered, the biggest problem they have is the fact that they don't have their money they're supposed to have in their rainy day fund. Um, uh, I'd, I'd rather not wait until February or March to have some idea as to what the state is thinking about. I'm hoping they're thinking about something. So I would suggest we do something, uh, be a little more proactive at, in, in the fall so we can figure out where we're, where we're going to go with this. I think it's a great idea. In the past, we've not had any success at tipping, you know, hey, governor, a hey, hey, legislature can't hurt to try, Uncle Jack. What if we uh, invited Brian Murray and Mr. Fatman in? What a great idea. Well, it's actually Aldo's idea. That's a great idea. You know, we tried to get commuter rail service. Let's do that for the first meeting in the fall. I know. Well, well, let's let's shoot committee. for that. We have to certainly well, find out from them whether they're going to. We'll be invite to... them. Yeah. For the first meeting. If they can't, we'll do the second meeting. What but I'd I like to know is, are they even talking about this? And if they're talking about it, yeah, we really don't want to know in March Agreed. when House Bill 1 comes out that we're going to be shorted uh, a million and a half dollars. And to Bobby's point, who should write the invitation? The chairman. I think the critical thing there is, <clears throat> if you have to look at the historicals in this. I mean, they, they point the finger at the governor, but it's really the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate that vote the budgets. Of course. And they have been using um, the rainy day fund, which is the uh, equivalent to our stabilization fund, to run operational expenses, which we have never done in the town of Milford, to everyone's credit. But this just didn't happen this year or the year before, the year before that. Three years. They it might have been more than that. They didn't put a nickel in, Bob, for the last three years. They were years. taking it out. Oh, right, exactly. But they didn't put anything in for the last So three. some of that historical information might be helpful before we bring them. But that's a great idea. Okay. Um, yes, sir. So I literally just returned from the Cape from my county conference, and one of the agenda items was... Zach, can you come up so that the six loyal viewers of town meetings can hear you? <laughs> So it's interesting you just mentioned this because I just returned from a conference in which uh, a lengthy one where they talked about the state of the state and this exact issue and, and how the uh, bond rating was dropped and it is uh, attributed to the fact that they have not replenished their stabilization fund. It's not necessarily that the level it's at. 1.3 billion now. Correct. So the problem is historically this happens and they, they do pull from stabilization but quickly return it back to an appropriate level. The issue here and why they decided to drop the rating was because it has not happened. They pulled out of it and it's remained um, at, at a low level for close to four consecutive years now. So that was the driving factor of why uh, it got reduced but at the same time to your point of wanting to know if, if we're going to get hit with um, a reduction in state aid. As I was told, that probably will not happen, but one of the main issues of what they're dealing with right now is um, their revenue projections are not even close to where they should be, and we're talking upwards of a half billion dollars off of where the projections would be. So all of a room full of accountants obviously asking the, the question like okay how are you not going to reduce your budget probably fall in there and how are you gonna not pull out of stabilization if you're not going to reduce the budget so your point of wanting to know what the plans are my take from it there's not many right now yeah. so you know if enough towns decide that they need answers they're gonna have to do something you know if, if I read it correctly it was saying that the when the uh, the what uh, the stabilization their stabilization or their rainy day fund is fully funded, they have four to six weeks of operating capital in that particular account. Now, with the low number in there, as I read it, they only have two weeks of op of, of operational money available. So, I just think that we need to at least be aggressive. I would hope that your association is aggressive and put these people on the spot. 
you know, we, we get our budget on June 30 every year. What happens from September to, uh, you know, to the end of the year? Correct. Let's get ahead of the game rather than follow in the back room. I agree you with know, you. So yep. I think we're going to account, you know, how about this Finance Committee Association? Everybody needs to step up and let people that are on Beacon Hill understand that just because we're out in the country doesn't mean we can't read. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Unless there is an objection at this point, I'd like to turn the meeting over to the good Dr. Chakey. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Chairman. Uh, what uh, this is is a, a nomination list for the officers for the Finance Committee for the next fiscal year. I, have, uh, I was contacted by some of these folks, and uh, I have spoken with all of the individuals that I'm presently are going to uh, nominate for positions uh, on the Finance Committee for next year. I'm prepared this evening, having spoken with them all, I know that they will accept the nomination. Uh, Chris Morin for the Chairman's spot, Al Correa for the Vice Chairman, Mike Swars, Mike Schiavi, and Mike Nicholson for the Executive Committee. I'll give this to you. I'll give this to you. So I'm prepared at this point to place these names in nomination one at a time. I'm going to, uh, at this point, nominate uh, Chris Morin for another term as Chairman of the Finance Committee. Second. Any further nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed, and I will cast one vote for Chris Morin. Uh, the second one is the Vice Chair, and I'm prepared to nominate Alberto Correa as the Vice Chairman. Second. The second is, are there any further nominations? Hearing none, I will close the nominations at this time, and I will cast one vote for Alberto Correa. Now the Executive Committee, there are three members of the Executive Committee, the Chair and Vice Chair are automatically members of that committee. Mike Soares, Mike Schiavi, and Mike Nicholson. I'm pre uh, prepared to put those three gentlemen's uh, names in as members of the executive committee. Second. You can second it. <clears throat> Any other nominations? Hearing none, I'll close the nominations. I will cast one vote for each of the three gentlemen, and they will become executive committee members. Thank you very much. I had to wait till he turned the meeting back. Okay. okay, at this point, the agenda <laughs> item, except for executive session, has been met. All the items except for a call for new business. Is there any new business in front of the committee? Was the one that? Yes. Okay, we recognize John Tanaro with new business. The subject of uh, my business is Mark Shane. As you probably all know, that Mark has recently resigned. Uh, he has been a longtime member, a longtime chairman, a very positive and active member, and what I realize tonight, his three-year term is up June 30th this year. Uh, I would like to totally suggest to the selectmen that they arrange for a meeting with Mark as they are the appointing body and see if they can uh, suggest that he continue on as a member of the Finance Committee. I know he was disappointed at one of, at, uh, one of our very last meetings that he would worked hard at one particular item no need to reiterate it. And when he lost it, he, he became very upset. Uh, Mark has been very cool as the chairman of our committee. He's been very active, has educated a lot of the members here off the uh, meeting, uh, has worked very hard both with the selectmen and the town meeting uh, or the town officials. So we have the chairman of the Board of Selectmen here, Mr. Kincaid, and I would uh, <laughs> like to suggest or ask him if uh, Mark, Mark's in Denmark, is it? Norway. Norway. 
Mark's uh, in Norway visiting his daughter and his, his son and his daughter-in-law. And I'd like uh, to suggest to Mr. Kincaid if he and some of the selectmen could have a talk with Mark and suggest to him to maintain on this committee. He has an awful lot of uh, uh, information about the committee. He has initiated many points that we now use. Uh, He's been, in my opinion, an excellent chairman, but after a while you just get tired of it and you've got to turn over the gavel to someone else. So, uh, Mr. Kincaid, well, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would like to make the suggestion for you and the other two selectmen when Mark returns, which I believe is next Monday, so it'll probably be after your Monday meeting if you have one, just to have a friendly conversation, reiterate to him his importance to this committee and how he has, through the past couple of years, or more than that, worked very hard prior to becoming chairman and uh, trying to direct our present chairman in his duties and all the problems that come up that you know you don't always see. I think if Mark does not remain, it would be a great loss to this committee, a great loss to the town of Milford, and I would ask your cooperation in asking him to, A, remain on the FinCom committee, and B, <laughs> reappoint him. I don't think anybody here would disagree that Mark's been one of the hardest working and a member with one of the biggest hearts towards the town. He may gruff and groan, but at the end of the day, you can't ask. I've always said it. If I was in a foxhole, I'd want nobody covering my back more than Mark, because if I took a bullet, it means he's dead. Oh, I'm sorry. So, Willie, do you need any formal? Sure. One second. I did mention, Mike, I didn't see you come in. It, uh, 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 Selectman uh, Michael Walsh is here. Although I didn't direct it to I apologize. And if, you, if you'd... If it's all right with it, if you'd like to come forward with the chairman, I don't think there'd be a problem. Any problem with that, Willie? Uh, no, I mean, I, if it's okay, Please. Mr. Chairman, I think, um, and I appreciate uh, everything Jack said. I think, first of all, I'm one of three, regardless of whether I'm the chairman or not, and I certainly don't think this is the time for, for Mike and I to necessarily take up the conversation, considering it wasn't an agenda item, but I do um, appreciate it being brought up. The only up. question we're asking is do you need anything more? Well, what I, that's what I'm getting to. I think, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I'm kind of putting this together right now. Um, I think you need to decide where your committee is and then correspond that with, with us. Um, and you can direct that to me. It doesn't have to be anything formal, but just to say that the FinCom thinks this and we would like you to do that because then at least that gives us or me an opportunity to discuss it on Monday or at a subsequent meeting. Um, I'm not, yeah, the 19th, because I'm not sure where Mike is. I'm not sure where we, Bill is. We wouldn't so. ask you for an off the cuff decision. <laughs> oh, no, I, I understand that. I think something is, more formal. Yeah. You need to speak amongst yourselves. sounds like we yourselves. have a motion from Jack Tanaro to ask the selectmen to reach out to Mark for reconsideration on the board. Does anybody second that motion? I will. Jeff has seconded. Motion being made and seconded. Are there anybody that has, is there anybody with discussion? <clears throat> discussion? Well, I think that, uh, as we probably all will agree, I assume, that Mark has been very important important to this committee and more he's been very important to the town and our interest we wouldn't be here for the large salary that we're getting <laughs> by the way we want to raise this year we want to double our zero salary consider it done <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he spends a lot of time he's very involved he sticks to his guns and probably uh, that's good and sometimes it works against you but I think it would be an injustice if Mark leaves this committee. That's my opinion, not the opinion of the committee. They can well, make now up. Now we'll have the vote unless somebody else wants to have discussion. The motion on the floor 
is to ask the selectmen to reach out via a letter from our chairman to ask Mark to reconsider leaving the board. Right, and the, 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 and the part that we want to remember is his term was up June 30th this year, mm -hmm. but so it'll be sort of like a reappointment, you know. No discussion, all in favor? Please show unanimous. No, I'm opposed. Oh, okay. Then write down one opposed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine favorable, one opposed. And obviously I don't get the vote. Thank you, kind sirs. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, unless there's any new business or any subcommittee reports, we need a motion to go in and out of executive session when we're done. For the purpose of the purpose of being purchase. read in on the water committee, water company purchase status. And we will adjourn. And to, that's what I'm saying, and out. I we'll so adjourn. move, Mr. Chairman. I Is second. A second. Okay, for this motion, we need a roll call. Bobby. Yes. 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 To everybody. At this point, thank you for joining in, and we will go into executive session so the cameras will stop. <coughs> we will not come back per the motion to open session. So, for our six loyal viewers, good night and thank you for joining. Excuse me, just a point of clarification. We will come out of executive session for the purpose of adjourning. Of adjourning. <laughs>